The innermost shrine was where the Ark was kept. The last time the Ark is mentioned in the Bible is just a few years before the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem and destroyed Solomon's temple. Was the Ark among the objects they looted? We know that uh, the holy objects from the temple were taken uh, in captivity to Babylon and they were given back in 538. Among them, there was no Ark of the Covenant. But I've heard another theory, that when the Israelites learned the Babylonians were coming, they hid the Ark underground for safekeeping. Gabriel is now taking me deep beneath Jerusalem streets to find out more. In Jerusalem, we have burial caves, cavities, conduits. Most well-known among them is the Siloam Tunnel or Hezekiah's Tunnel. We're actually wading through Hezekiah's Tunnel, dug by the Israelites around the time the Ark disappeared. We have semi-legendary uh, stories about uh, hiding of the uh, Holy Ark in some subterranean cavity. Could tunnels like this have been used to conceal the Ark? This is here, Channel 3, uh, which uh, is an offshoot. Gabriel of says these were built solely to carry water. There's no archaeological evidence to suggest they were ever used for storing treasure. But he tells me there's a much more compelling theory for what may have happened to the Ark. In place today. Gabriel directs me to a place where he says they actually have the very object I've been searching for. And it's about the last place I'd expect to find it. Within Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The home of the Ethiopian Orthodox Christian Church. What could possibly be the connection between an ancient Hebrew artifact and an African church. This church has the Ark of the Covenant. It turns out every Ethiopian church has the Ark of the Covenant, but they're replicas. The question is why would over 30,000 Ethiopian churches all have a replica of the Ark of the Covenant? I may be about to find out from the bishop himself. This is Abu Nakostos, the Archbishop of the Ethiopian Orthodox Divided yes. Church in Jerusalem. He tells me an amazing story. One that's been passed down for generations. The Queen of Shiva heard about the wisdom of King Solomon and came uh, all the way to Jerusalem uh, uh, to witness that uh, wisdom. While Sheba was in Jerusalem, the story goes, she and Solomon conceived a child, Prince Menelik, who lived in Ethiopia with his mother. Then, when Menelik came of age, he returned to Jerusalem to see his father. While Menelik was here, he managed to gain custody of the Ark and bring it back with him to Ethiopia. And the bishop says that's where it remains today. So, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church believes that they have the real Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia. They venerate the Ark, and that's why there's a replica in all of their churches. It also turns out northern Ethiopia is the ancient biblical land of Ophir. It's an area with strong historical ties to Judaism. I'm on a treasure hunt for one of the most precious religious artifacts in the world. The Ark of the Covenant. According to the Bible, this prized and powerful object disappeared about 2,500 years ago. My search for it has taken me from Mount Sinai, where the Bible says the Ark was made, to Jerusalem, where it was kept for about 500 years. Now I'm off to Ethiopia, where an ancient monastery may hold clues to the Ark's whereabouts today. Many Ethiopians believe the Ark was brought to their country from Jerusalem around 950 BC. I'm on the trail of the Ark of the Covenant and it's brought me here to Ethiopia. I've arranged to meet Miskana. Miskana? Nice to meet you. Miskana is my guide and interpreter. He's taking me to one of the oldest monasteries in Ethiopia called Debra Dama. To get there, we're traveling through the ancient biblical land of Ophir. Ethiopia is one of the oldest Christian nations in Africa, with strong historic ties to the Middle East. 
Could the Ark be the link between Israel and this African nation? I'm told the place we're heading for is the home of some monks who could answer that question, and many more. Deborah Damo is the largest repository of ancient Christian manuscripts in Africa. It's the perfect place to learn more about whether the Ark was really brought here from Jerusalem, and maybe where it is today. Which one's Deborah Damo? Deborah Damo is there in front of us, on the top of the hill. The Mesa? In the Mesa, yeah. That looks kind of hard to get to. We have to drive there and then we climb uh, by the rope, but it's very tough to reach there. A rope? What kind of monastery would make you climb a rope to reach it? This could be a whole lot of fun. Deverdama was about 10 miles off the main road at the end of an unpaved track. On the way, we have to cross this stream bed, which is not always possible during the rainy season. And of course, this is the rainy season. On top of that, come nightfall, the whole area will become a bandit zone. Yes. Ah, it's a long drive. Finally. <clears throat> Welcome to the monastery of Deborah Damo. Amazingly, it's built at the top of this sheer rock face. Here we are, we arrived. Now we have to take the, the rope to climb up. This I give it my best shot, but cowboy boots aren't made for toe holds like these. There we go. That first bit, it's a little bit tough. Few people risk the climb. Maybe because it's just so embarrassing. Okay, round two. Barefoot is definitely the way to go. For added safety, the monks are giving me a harness. That, plus the leather rope, are all I've got to pull myself up with. I begin the climb. I just can't help wondering how it is that these monks, from the very young to the very old, do this climb on a regular basis. This is nuts. Piece of cake. Oh, I left something at the bottom. No, I'm just wow, wow, wow. Here we are. Mamma mia. But we're not there yet there is still more climbing to do. Miskana explains the monastery is truly a men's club. Even the animals up here are exclusively male. The monastery itself is amazing, and its ancient books may tell me where in Ethiopia the Ark arrived on its journey from Israel. And that's what I need to continue my quest. And here's the monastery. Here we arrived the church, made a crossing. The monastery is dedicated to Saint Aragawi, one of the first saints to bring Christianity to Ethiopia back in the fourth century. Since the sixth century, its monks have safeguarded some of the most precious religious manuscripts in the nation. So it is close, we have to wait until the priest comes. Take yeah. off our shoes. Yes, take off your shoes. Just put them back on. Yeah. Access to the library is strictly controlled. It takes the personal blessing of one of the senior priests to sanction our presence here. Stepping into this room is like stepping back in time. I'm hoping this library can take me all the way back to the days of King Solomon and the Ark. So this got it. Does he have any ancient manuscripts that might tell us about the Ark of the Covenant? Our host tells us this book was written long ago by the head monk at the time. The one who stayed in this monastery, he wrote this book, which is in the, around the 5th century. Century. So this, century. this is 1,500 years old. That's amazing. It's a combination of the Holy Bible and the legends of the Ethiopian Christian Church. 
Let me try if there is something here in the, the book contains the same story I heard in Jerusalem of how the Ark came to Ethiopia.